Okay, so today we are going to talk about speaking in tongues. Many people have the wrong belief about speaking in tongues, and there's so much confusion in the body of Christ that let's clear it up right now, right today. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Thank you for landing on my channel for the best teachings on healing. Hit that bell. Click that button, that subscribe button, so you will be informed when I post a new video every single week, every single Wednesday. Hey, I'm Tony Myers, and I was healed from Lou Gehrig's disease. <clears throat> I was featured on the 700 Club, and I've led thousands. Oh, yeah, I'm also the author of five books on divine healing, and I just revised Unlocking the Mystery of Divine Healing. Now it includes a study guide plus new content. Thank you, Jesus. I've led thousands of people to be able to acknowledge that they are healed. With just a few little tweaks in your perception, you, yes, you, can be next. <laughs>
he heard the apostles in port Portuguese, and so on, so forth. That's the tongues of men. Tongues of angels. Angels meaning messengers. All right? So it's the tongue of a message that is to be used when we are assembling and the Holy Spirit nudges us to speak in tongues as a message to a body of believers with that there should be two or three interpreters and as Paul says if there are no interpreters keep your mouth shut I'm paraphrasing keep your mouth shut speak it to yourself because as he states I would rather speak five words of understanding in an assembly than 10,000 words in an unknown language. But yet, here's the thing. So, we're going to get into this. And this, this is just going to be a short teaching, but hopefully this will introduce you to tongues to where you can be equipped because there's revelation, knowledge you can attain from speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues edifies the inner person, the spirit. If your spirit is edified, therefore your physical being is edified. It motivates, it encourages, builds up. Okay? So there are many benefits, including you can receive supernatural energy. I've done this before. While I'm on trips driving across the country, I'm speaking in tongues and I do not get tired. Amen. So there are many benefits. Now, so... The first thing I want you to understand in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul is talking about in an assembly. Okay, they used to mean houses, but his primary reference now to this is in the tongue of angels. It is how to deal with tongues as a corporate body. Okay. He's but even then he does bring up tongues as a prayer language on a number of different scopes. One of those is as I just mentioned was that he states that if there are no interpretations Let me see. Right here. 1 Corinthians 14, 28. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church. Let him speak to himself and to God. That's the prayer language. So he is referring to it right there. He also... I speak tongues more than y'all. Now, if he would prefer to speak five words in a known language than 10,000 words, he is obviously not referring to he's speaking tongues more than y'all in an assembly. No, he's referring to his private prayer language outside of an assembly. That is where he is specifically referring to using tongues as a prayer language. And then we have, I'm trying to find it exactly. Well, 14, 18 through 19, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. 
more than everyone that was reading the letter. Yet, in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach also. Then 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. In 1439, Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. Right there, once again, the private prayer language. So what people don't understand is when in chapter 14, he is primarily talking about when assembling together. But he also references that speaking tongues as a prayer language to God often. And one of the verses I just read right there was that when you, if there's no interpreter, have it your, your private prayer language and speak it to yourself and to God. And keep your mouth shut if there are no interpreters. Amen. So there are, as I've been talking about it, there's a lot of benefits to it, including it's the same thing as being able to acknowledge your healing. So therefore, speak in tongues. Learn how to speak in tongues as your private prayer language. There are a lot of misunderstandings. We as church people oftentimes if somebody doesn't speak in tongues they haven't received the Holy Spirit. We should not go there. Okay? That's just wrong. Just because someone doesn't speak in tongues does not mean they are not a believer in Christ. That's the first misconception. Here's another misconception. That the Holy Spirit takes you over. And while you're speaking in tongues, he changes your personality and... You know, forgive me, but Pentecostals have portrayed speaking in tongues in the wrong way that is weirded out, causing other people to not want to do it. And right here, 1 Corinthians 14.32 and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. That means you can start and stop it. The Holy Spirit is within you. He is a part of you. He conforms to your personality, not the other way around. Because we are his temple. He abides in us. And so while he polishes us up and takes off the rough edges, he does not change our personality. And with that verse I just read, the prophets, that's a general term that it means all believers, essentially. Okay? So when you speak in tongues, you can stop it, you can start it. It is subject to the one speaking it. God doesn't take you over and get you all weirded out. That is your own perception of what it is and not the truth. That's how you perceive it happens. So to you it happens like that. The Holy Spirit is not about taking someone over and forcing them to do something He's not about that. Okay? When I speak in tongues, I speak, look at it like this. If I knew another language like Spanish, okay, 
I don't change my personality because I just switch from speaking English to speaking Spanish. There, I don't get all weirded out and all of this. I'm just switching to another language. So tongues as a prayer language is the same way. We are just now speaking another language. The Holy Spirit is not making us weird, not making us freaky. The last thing he wants to do is freak other people out. And yes, I know the arguments, but I'm telling you is that I just simply switch to speaking in tongues. That's my personal prayer language. Okay, so. Hopefully that clears it up. There are so many benefits. Almost every book I've written, I was speaking in tongues while writing it. When I read and study scriptures, I'm speaking in tongues. 85% of my prayer language is speaking in tongues. And the next video, I will talk a little bit about, okay, how if you've never spoken in tongues, how do you do it? And I'll get into that next week, so tune in next week. Now, in the description section, and hey, share this video. Like it, share it. Subscribe, hit the bell, so you'll be notified. All right? In the description section, I have my private Facebook group, which I've got the PDF to three of my books in there, including the revised version of unlocking so follow that link join my group all it takes is through is answer three simple questions tune in next week we'll talk more about tongues god bless be blessed be healed and be a blessing